Today I'm going to be talking about the TechArt TA-GA3 autofocus adapter for the Contax G lens series to the Sony E-bodies. This is a pretty compact little adapter. As you can see, it adds very little size to the, to the lens. Pretty compact, very small, and it installs fairly easily. Once you learn the little tricks, and there are some tricks, because the matching points are not well marked. Now when I turn this on, you're going to see it does an initial setup. And when I go to get focus, you're going to hear it achieving focus and a confirmation beep when it's on focus. The focus with this has actually been pretty good. I've been pretty pleased with the focus. It does seem to get the right subject. And I'm going to try and show you. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that or not, but if you can see the little green squares on the screen are where it's found focus. So you can tell where the focus is, is been. Now, I don't recall ever seeing that on any other E-mount lens. So I have to think that has to do something with the communication because I believe that's the way that contacts verified focus on the early contacts bodies, the contacts G1 and G2 bodies. So it's pretty nice, pretty efficient. You can tell when it's achieved focus. Now, in comparison, Take a look at this manual Kipon adapter for Contax G to Sony E-bodies. This is a manual ring, and I have to say this is probably one of the least attractive ones I've ever seen, but it works fine. But it does get good focus. When you focus with this, you need to use the focus magnification settings on the camera. They help a lot and show you, confirm that you have it in focus. So they're very useful. If you haven't ever used focus magnification before, you need to go in the second part of the main menu in the settings, and you need to go to Manual Focus MF Assist, turn it on, and put the focus magnification time to no limit. And then you go about four pages deeper down into the settings. I think it's page six on one and seven on the other of these two cameras and go into custom key settings and you can set up C1 and C2 to be your your focus magnification or focus settings whichever you prefer. Focus settings by the way and focus magnification are very similar except for focus settings has one extra push so you see where it's focusing whereas focus magnification just takes the center and each button magnifies it up to two times. It's handy, works quick, with these manual focus lenses, it's pretty much required that you use the focus magnification because otherwise you will miss focus. I had a problem with that on my new Voigtlander f1.1 lens. I thought it was in focus by the, by the focus peaking and when I got home I saw that it wasn't on my computer and then when I went back and used focus magnification I was able to achieve good focus. On these manual lenses particularly, uh, it's very helpful. Now, it is nice that the tech art does such a good job that it actually gets very true focus. does a good job. One of the things I want to mention with this tech art adapter is that you must use aperture priority or manual to be able to use the automatic uh, settings to get auto exposure. If you use the program mode or the shutter uh, priority mode, you will find that it says it changed the aperture, but obviously it doesn't have access to be able to change the aperture, and it winds up being over or underexposed. So, like I said, be sure and use the aperture priority or manual. Okay, so let's quickly compare the size of the TechArt autofocus to this manual focus by Kipon. And as you can see, as you can see, they're very similar in size. They're not much smaller than the autofocus. Now the autofocus has a little part in the bottom with a motor, but uh, they're, they're similar in size. As a matter of fact, this is a little smaller in diameter because of the 
manual focusing ring. So they are similar in size. As you can see, the contact Zeiss lenses are very small indeed. So they work very nicely with this camera. And you can see that's a nice, pretty compact package. Now this is the 45 millimeter f2 lens. And I've been using this with the manual focus and the autofocus. It seems to work very well with both adapters. I have gotten a little bit of vignetting with this, but I have a stacked filter and the hood. And I'm thinking that may be the cause of it at wide open aperture. It seems to go away by f2.8 to f4, but it's a little disconcerting. I'll have to try that without the filter and the hood and see if that removes it completely. I haven't heard any complaints on that. The 35 also is reputed to work well in it. Not so much with the 21 and the 28. They have a larger flange and it seems to be a problem with going into the camera. And I've also heard that there's some other problems around the edges with the wider wide angle lenses. Overall, I would say the tech art is not perfect, but it's much faster than manual focusing. And it seems to do a pretty good job. For the most part, I find myself very pleased with it. One of the things I'm going to add is that TechArt is also coming out with the same type of an autofocus adapter for the Leica M lens to the Sony E body. And I've already ordered one of those because I'm so happy with this TechArt. The Leica M, as you can see, is a very small adapter, very similar to the one from the Contax G because, of course, it's a rangefinder. This is a Voigtlander M lens. It works very well on the Sony A7. Now, as I said, I took this out and tried it the other day at F1. It's a very interesting lens. It's a little less expensive than the Zeiss or the Leica lenses, but uh, it does a pretty good job. I have to say that it had a very unusual bokeh. It had an almost bubbly quality to the background, which I found very interesting. I'll have to experiment with more with it to see how it works that way and when, but I'll, I'll put that up on the screen for you and show you what I'm talking about. But uh, an interesting one, and the primary reason I got this is I wanted to see how the Leica M would work. And here again, you need to use the focus magnification or focus setting to be able to get clear focus on this, sharp focus on this, because focus peaking simply won't do the job well enough for you on these lenses if you want it to be as sharp as I know you do. That's the comment on that, so that's that. Now, I also want to talk just a little bit about some of these other adapters. I did a review on the Metabones adapter early on, quite a while ago, and I was complaining about it because I wasn't getting sharp focus. I think the problem I was having was that I wasn't using focus magnification. I was trying to use focus peaking. It simply isn't enough. So at that said, with the Metabones adapter on my Nikon lenses, now this is a manual lens, which has a very buttery smooth focus ring. But with that, the Metabones is much better. I've also tried the Kip-On Shift, and it seems to work just fine here again. Use your focus magnification, and you'll be happy with that one. So in conclusion, there have been a lot of additions to the adapters that are available for Sony E, and the introduction of autofocus for the Contax G, and hopefully for the very new future for Leica's M mount lenses. And we've also got them now for the Canon lenses. And here again, there's been an announcement of them for the Nikon F lenses. We have a ton of choices for the Sony E-mount, and I think it should make our life a lot better. In addition, of course, we've also got the introduction of the new G lenses for the Sony by Sony, and quite a few new Zeiss, the Betas, and several other new options as far as lens options. This is just one more, and I'm very happy to see the autofocus. This is a great way to get Zeiss lenses very inexpensively. The adapter was less than 300. The 90 millimeter lens was a little less than 200. The 45 millimeter lens was about twice as expensive as the 90 millimeter. Don't ask me why, but it was a little over 350. Uh, very good lens. Also have the 35. It's reputed to be a good lens too. So a lot of options out there with the adapters. 
I'm really looking forward to seeing TechArt's newest one for the Leica M. And I'm looking forward to using more Leica M mount lenses on my Sony. But I have to tell you, I'm pretty happy with the Sony lenses too. So, quick review of the TechArt. It's worth a try. It is a pretty good adapter. It's much faster than doing it. Thanks.